Hey, this iPhone guy, this is the first looks and initial impressions of the Barnes & Noble Nook. But before we get into that, I mean, I have the video after, I gotta tell you a little bit of a story. So I go in with my camera, play around with it five minutes to kind of get to know the interface. They had a 15 minute limit on playing with it, so it's not like I could say, and this is how you do this, and this is how you do this, because I didn't know, I didn't have enough time to figure it out. And I talked to the guy at the customer support desk, and it was kind of weird because I was bringing my camera and I was going to film right where the customer support desk is because that's where they have all the nooks. And I said, listen, can I film a video? And they said, well, no, you can't because, uh, I mean, you have to sign a press release. You have to agree not to use it. And I'm like, oh, that's a waste of time. Never mind. And he said, hold on. Let me check with our manager real quick. And I was like, well, no, that's all right. And just as about as I'm about to leave, he uh, comes out, the manager comes out and says, no, wait, yesterday they changed the policies. You can record a video, like showing the Nook itself, the interface. All you can't do is you can't go into our store and you can't show the books themselves. It did a little bit, but they said you can't go into, you know, you can't show copyrighted content. And I said, all right, and I agreed to their terms and went into it. And so I still only had like 10 minutes to play around with it. So... I don't really know the interface. I didn't know all too well what was going on. I don't know what the things on the top were just because I didn't have enough time to learn about them. And I went in, shot the video, and kind of did it off the beat of my heart, you know. So uh, the video itself is a bit shady. It's a bit sketchy. I kind of know what I'm talking about. But if I talk about the same thing multiple times or I don't get it exactly right, forgive me, I only had five minutes to play with the interface. So that's why. It's the Barnes & Noble book review nook review their ebook reader so uh here it is and enjoy hey everyone this is that snazzy iphone guy i'm here at barnes and noble and this is just a quick first looks and impressions of the barnes and noble nook now this is available for 259 off of barnesandnoble.com unfortunately you cannot get them right out of the chute there was a bit of a manufacturing delay so if you ordered them previous to this date you could get them before the holiday season but if not uh, they won't be available as far as I know until the 1st of January. So the device itself is pretty um, pretty simple. As you can see, it's pretty thin. It's a bit thicker than its competitor, the Amazon Kindle, but not by a long shot. On the back, it's arched so that it fits and conforms to your hands very well. On the top, there's a sleep-wake button. On the bottom here, there is the, uh, the port to charge it. There's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then there's two speakers. Um, on the sides, there's nothing, and on the other sides, there's nothing. On the face of the device itself, there's four buttons right here. They all toggle forward and backwards in pages. And then there is the e-ink screen, of course, with the touchscreen interface as well, with the Barnes & Noble logo on the bottom. So to press the power button, which is on top, and that will um, pop into the interface of the Nook. And uh, here you're ready to go. So what we're going to do is push the end button, which is right there. It's just a touch-sensitive button. There's no physical push to it. But it will bring us to the main menu of the Nook itself. Uh, now, it is run by the touchscreen and the e-ink display, so there's the wallpaper. There's five options down at the bottom, and there are settings, reading now, shop, my library, and the daily. You can simply select one of them, and you can select to see how long you want the device to go before it turns off the display. Uh, that is a bit of a problem for me personally, because uh, with the Kindle, you're always available to the buttons, whereas this turns off the screen, and it's a bit tricky because it will turn off the screen and keep it off until you click a few times to wake it back up. So you could, there's five buttons down here at the bottom. If we push the daily, that takes you to the Barnes & Noble store, tells you what's new, and can uh, select all of the free books for you. There's uh, My Library, and that's the books that you currently own. Uh, you can download them directly from the Note store from your device or on your computer and then sync to it, as far as I believe. Um, there is shopping, which is the same deal. My library is the books you already have, and shopping, it brings you to Barnes & Noble site where you can choose bullet books that you want. And then... And then push the end button again, and that takes you back. Now, the e-ink display is actually pretty fast. It keeps up with the touch screen. And in all honesty, the touch screen isn't that fast. It's a bit slow, actually, almost too laggy for me to stand. But the ink display refreshes very quickly, and uh, I was pretty impressed by that. So you push the end button, and the nut home button, and it will take you back to the home. You can push reading now. That takes you to the book you're currently reading. Uh, so it formats. It takes a few seconds to do that, to format it to the uh, direction you're at you're in. And uh, you can advance pages by pushing this button. And it takes a second, as always. 
maybe it didn't register that one, there you go. So it takes a few seconds to register the click, but then you can go back and go forward. And go forward. So uh, these are physical buttons right here, and then this display itself is a touch screen. Now one thing I'm not used to the iPhone is I wake my display by touching the end button. If you do that with the Nook, um, it will take you back to the main screen, so you need to touch the display itself. Give it a few seconds and it will turn on. So if you push the, uh, the button right there, uh, it'll take you back to the main interface. Um, there's those five options, uh, the daily, my library shop, reading now, and settings. Um, you just hop in here real quick, you can select the background, a few other things. Um, a little bit about the Nook itself, battery charge. Um, then there's my library, for example, you can go in here and you scroll and navigate with the touch screen itself. You don't use these buttons, but it will appear on the display. So you push the up button on the touch screen and it will go up on the display. And then you can select the button here over here in the corner to actually jump into the book. And uh, you can archive it, you can get an overview of the book, you can rate it yourself, and then you can, of course, share it with your friends if they have a nook as well. And then you can read it and it will jump in to the book itself. So here up at the top you have your Wi-Fi signal, you have the Barnes & Noble logo, which I think means that you're in a Barnes & Noble store, uh, the battery, the time, and then my note, which is where you are inside of the interface. So you push this button right here again and you're brought to the main display. It's really a pretty simple, pretty easy uh, interface. There are a few menus and sub settings to get into that seem kind of rhetorical to get to. I wish they would have organized this front page a little bit better to the reader because, I mean, chances are the daily and the shop, they're the same thing. They should have stuck the daily inside of the shop and allowed you to have a music selection here instead of just my library. Uh, when you jump into my library, it also allows you to go into, um, so once again, you push that back arrow and it will refresh the screen. So you can show all the covers, which is neat. That's cool for the book. And then uh, you can scroll through kind of like a cover flow feel. It is a little bit laggy, but that's because this isn't packed with a ton of memory. It's not meant to be a power beast. Um, you take it, you select it. Oops, excuse me, you push read. It formats for a minute and then it will get into the book itself. The display itself is really nice. I think it's 16 tone. So uh, unlike a lot of other displays, it is very easy to read. Uh, the glare itself, there's not a very big glare. It looks surprisingly like a book. I mean, I know eight displays are supposed to, but it looks incredible actually. And so this toggle down here shows you where you are at in the progress of the book. Place the button again and you can jump back to the main screen. So it's pretty cool, it's pretty neat to work around with. It is pretty thin. Um, I don't know the exact battery life on it. I think they claim seven days, so that's pretty good. Um, and uh, there you go. So that is the overview and the look of the Barnes & Noble Nook. You can pre-order it on their website, barnesandnoble.com, for $259. Uh, the memory itself, I think, is two gigs, and then you can expand it through an SD card, which is somewhere on the device. I don't know exactly. But uh, it's a pretty neat little thing. It's a bit top heavy, which is weird because if you're holding it like this, it tends to tilt down, which bothers me a little. I think they should have stuck all the weight down in the bottom, but uh, it's, it is substantially heavier than the Amazon Kindle, and I can just tell that from looking at it. But it's a pretty cool little device, and uh, I hope to see um, Amazon come back with the competition. The integration of the screen was really quite nice. One thing that is amazing compared to the Kindle is if you search your library, it comes up with this awesome keyboard. Now this keyboard is really good because as most of us know, the Amazon Kindle's keyboard is horrid, especially the DX. The DX is not even a keyboard, it's just a bunch of buttons that you can barely push, but this is very easy to navigate around. You search your titles, and it doesn't require a full refresh, it just adds the ink. It only requires a refresh to erase the ink, I think. So if you go back, oh, it doesn't even require that. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, you can search, of course. And it's not the snappiest device out there, but no book reader is. I mean, it takes time to load the screen to search through the library because this thing isn't a power horse memory, but it's a pretty cool little device. That's the first thoughts and impressions of the Barnes & Noble Nook. I'm looking to get one over the holidays, hopefully. And uh, if I do, I'll definitely go into more depth with that. So that is the Barnes & Noble Nook. Uh, thanks for watching. That's Nazi iPhone Guy. Please subscribe, rate, and comment. And as always, stay snazzy. Have a good one, guys.